Hello, hello, beautiful. How are you today? Happy, right now it's Tuesday. This is day two of the Incoming Papers Challenge. And I'm glad that you're here with me. Awesome. Well, as usual, as you hop on, let me know who you are and where you're joining me from in the chat area. But today on day two, we are talking about how to organize all of your mail and to-do papers with the free action file as that foundation. We will also talk about where to put your action file so you can set yourself up for success so you don't forget it and so you make it as easy as possible to use this new system that is going to just, it's just amazing when it starts going and so much fun. All right, also in the chat, tell me, do you already have an action file or do you use something different? Let me know in the uh, chat area and if you have an action file, do you like it? Is it working for you? Do you, uh, is it new to you? Um, or maybe you're restarting <laughs> learning how to use it. Tell me about it. I'd just love to know. Also today, since you're joining me live um, or in the replay afterwards, for a limited time, you can grab the free folder cheat sheets. So the cheat sheets, let me see if I can find a picture of them for you. These cheat sheets are, um, there you go. These will help you out with your action file. So go to the link that is in the video description or in the chat area if you're on YouTube or the main Facebook page. But it is susannak.live forward slash tt dash download. So that will be up for a little while. Um, and then you can grab these printable cheat sheets. And as you can see in the picture, if you're watching on video, you can tape them to the front of your folders or you could tape them inside your folders, whichever works best for you. So it'll come on letter size sheets. So you could just cut them out and use them how you need to use them. And there's even some extras in there for if you have custom folders. So you can remind yourself what your custom folders were for. So make sure to grab that. And I'd ask you if you have an action file or something different um, and to say hi. So Kimberly says hi to both me and the puppy. I'm sure that she'll be up here soon. <laughs> Thank you, Kimberly. Lovely Marie says great morning with blessing and unconditional love. This is helping me so much. Can't wait to see what Susanna has for us today. Live from Alaska. Oh, I love it. Thank you, lovely Marie. Lynn is here from Colorado. She says, good morning. Hi, Lynn. And hi, Lori. She says, I revamped my two action files, one upstairs and one downstairs. She's trying to simplify the number of folders, right? Because remember what the action file is. The action file is a small <laughs> file holder. And the goal is to have 10 or fewer folders in it, right? Because our goal is to be able to put things into it really quickly without our brain having to think hard about which folder it should go in and to only have one folder that we have to check on a regular basis, which is our to-do folder, right? So the easier we can make this, the more simple this can be and the fewer folders, the more it will work. And I know it sounds kind of productive for all of my lovely detail-oriented administrator types, but I promise you it will work that way. Like Lori says, simplifying the number of folders, right? And remember the action file is just a temporary storage until you've handled all the actions that have to be done with that paper. And then the paper can flow either into recycle or shred or into your file system. All right. So thank you. Thank you for that little segue there. Lori, I love it. Melanie's here. She says, good morning from Southern California. Yes, I have an action file set up already. Just dusting it off. Yay. Going to touch that thing up, huh? Denise says, hello, it's cold in North Carolina today. Well, welcome. Dottie has an action file and she's redoing it. It's helped her find things better. Yay. Woot, woot. Great, Dottie. I'm glad. Denise says, oh, yeah, she has one, but it definitely needs some tweaking. She says, I've just been stuffing too much in it, so it's not working yet. Yeah, right? And Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about building the habit as well, because it is different with the action file. It's named the action file, right? Because the folder names are not what type of paper it is. The folder names are what is the next action needed. So it does take just a little bit. It's not terrible, but it does take a little bit to refocus how you're thinking about this. 
and um, to just get in the habit of it. But once you do, it is really, really helpful. So you are doing great, Denise. You are well on your way. <laughs> Lovely Marie says the action file is new for her, but she keeps falling off the wagon. Yep, you're new. It's, again, learning that new habit, right? So she needs to find something that will work outside of throwing all my papers on the desk when coming into the house. <laughs> well, today, hopefully, when we talk about where to place it, that should help some too. So that's great. Um, Lori asked if I've updated the cheat sheets. I have not. So if you already have them, they are the same. So you, pro you probably already have them from the Paper Path course, because that's one of the things in the Paper Path course, one of the many downloads, checklists, cheat sheets that I give you inside the course to organize all of your papers. Kathleen has an action file. She's restarting. She's going to form a new habit. Nice. Melody's here. Hi. Sheila says, hi, Sheila from Wappingers Falls, Nor New York. She has an act action file on her desk in her kitchen where she does most of her paperwork. That's a great place. Joanne says, hi. She has an action file. She says, love your ideas. Oh, thank you. Kathy says, good morning from Southern California. And Melody says, it's cool here in Fairfax. She uses her action file daily, trying to get more comfortable using it. But yes, daily, that's fantastic. Hello. Uh, flowers. I like it. Ellen, she's just called Flowers, <laughs> has to redo the file cabinet and she wants to have an action file. So she stops misplacing her bills. Yeah, right. Well, when you're redoing your file cabinet, I totally get that with the paper path system. Remember in the course, I we talk one of part of the system is your file cabinet. And that's one of the places that the papers can flow from the action file when they're finished into. So that's going to be really helpful when you have that done. Sharon's here from Texas. And Kimberly says she's a newbie. Wait, yay. Robin says, I have action piled. <laughs> but they're sadly mixed up. Yes, the action pile might work better. <laughs> Arnett says, Aloha. It's Arnett from Hawaii. I have one action folder with a monthly tab where I place items behind each month something is due. So you have more of a tickler file. That's awesome. Lori says she has too many to act and to read. And then we'll have actions that she needs to pull out and add to her to-do folder. Yep. Now that you've got that whole to-do versus to read, I think you're just going to do amazingly well. That's good. Helene says, good morning. Like Denise, stuffing too much in her existing action file, focusing on developing new habits. Yay. Terry's here. Hi, Terry. Great. Well, we've got some good stuff today then. I love it. Now, if you've not already grabbed those cheat sheets, remember the link is in the video description in the chat for YouTube and Facebook and um, in the description for the podcast. But if you've not grabbed that already, make sure to grab those today so it makes it just a little bit easier for you. But we talked about the purpose of the action file, right? This is our temporary stopover where anything that has something that needs to be done first, any papers that need have something to do stop in your action file. And those to-dos, it could be to enter, to read, to scan, to file, or something else, which would be the general to-do, right? So papers stop here. They can move around between the folders as the what needs to be done with them next changes. And then the way that they get out is they either get filed in your archives, right? If you need to keep the paper still, even after it's done, um, then it would get filed or it could go into recycle, shred, however else you want to dispose of it. Those are the two ways it gets out, right? So the action file is the first step of any paper system. And we talk about this within the paper path system as this is the first step. So when you do the course, even this is that first milestone in the course is get your action file set up and start using it. So really, you've already done most of the first milestone of the course, but this is essential so that way anything new and anything important are safe as you're working with the rest of your papers too, right? Absolutely. All right. So if you are enjoying the challenge so far, then please make sure to share it. Share it with your friends or whoever you think could use the paper challenge. Um, the more the merrier, right? So we talked about where does your action file fit in the paper system? It's kind of like the gatekeeper. You know, it's the receptionist for the CEO to <laughs> make sure that nothing gets through that shouldn't get through and be saved for a long period of time and that everything gets done before it even hits your main filing system. So it is sort of your gatekeeper and it's what keeps that file system um, 
it's one of the things that keeps it from getting overstuffed because I don't know about you, but I've seen so many file systems in my life where the file folders are just overstuffed and they need to be purged on a regular basis. But when you use the action file and those first steps of the paper path system that I teach in the course, those first steps, including the self purging files, which I talk about is uh, in milestone two, I believe, um, those self purging files and the action file are what keep it so you don't have to keep purging that file cabinet. And that file cabinet say, stays nice and neat and really useful for a, usually forever, at least for years and years, probably decades. <laughs> so it's definitely an essential part of your paper system. Uh, let's see. So in the comments, I wanted to say hi to Karen. She says, hi, everyone. Hello, Karen. So we talked about how do papers get out of the action file? They get out when all the actions are finished and then you either have to shred, recycle, or they go into the main file system. Really quickly, I did wanna cover what that main file system would look like. What's the overview of it? Oh, this is me too, by the way. <laughs> so I knew she would be up here soon. Whenever I start talking, she loves to come up. So your main file system, let me move this out of my way consists of multiple parts. And I'm going to talk about it from the perspective of what the main paper path system is. And if you did want to check out the paper path system right now, paper path course, you can find it in the online store at SusannaK.com. And I take you step by step through how to set up and use every single part of this system, super easy. But I like this system simply because it um, it is so easy to use. It does not require a lot of brain energy and you're much less likely to let me take out the screen to procrastinate right and to just pile things because when something's super easy it makes it so much easier for us to do right and when we procrastinate a lot of times it's because um, we feel like it's going to be too hard take too long uh, require too much effort we're not sure of the answers so if we can take all of that away right if we can answer the questions beforehand, have a clear path for your papers and make it super easy to get them there, then there's no reason to procrastinate anymore, right? Then you can just put things where they go quickly, especially if we have things such as our to file folder where you aren't going to the file cabinet over and over all the time. It just makes it so much easier. So when we talk about the system, let's see, we have, oh, Sorry, the mailman's here, so of course everybody's gonna lose it. So the first part of your mail system is your action file. Remember, that's our gatekeeper. That's the receptionist or the secretary before you hit the CEO. So they keep the junk out, make sure that anything that needs to be done gets done and gets put in the right place and is all settled before it even hits the CEO. So this is our gatekeeper, our action file. It keeps us from missing anything important or losing anything important as well. And then from the action file, everything goes in the action file. And then from there, there's a couple places it could go. And in the course, we talk about how to make that distinction, but it's actually very, very easy. Um, first would be your short-term self-purging files. And these are the ones that are super easy to reach. These are the ones that you would keep for a year or less. That's why they're short-term. Usually you keep them for one year or less. Sometimes you find out later that Oh, okay, well, I need to keep it longer. That's okay. It still works in the system. But this is one of our gatekeepers that keeps the main filing system from getting overloaded and it keeps what you need at your fingertips. So this makes taxes so much easier at the end of the year. It makes everything just really quick to grab and really quick to file, which I love. Then after your short-term files, that then come your long-term files. Now, my long-term files, as you can see, this is these are actually pictures from my system, <laughs> but my long-term files, I don't even use a file cabinet anymore because the gatekeepers, that action file and the short-term files, do such a good job of keeping all the riffraff out, all the stuff that I don't actually need the paper for, that I just have a nice sized um, hanging file box for my main archive files. So your archive files are those files that you would keep for one year or more. So you would need to keep them longer than that year. 
it, things can go from your short-term files into your long-term files, but once they're in your long-term files, really the only way they leave is recycle or shred. You know, this is kind of the last stop, and that's only if you really need to keep that paper. Um, and making decisions and understanding uh, what papers you really need to keep and how you need to keep them, that's also part of both the course and uh, there's a papers database that answers a lot of those questions for you and gives you some suggestions and ideas of how long do you need to keep such and such type of paper, which takes, again, makes it easier on your brain. So that's what your long-term files are though. That's where all the papers that pretty much are gonna be kept forever or at least longer than a year are going to go. And there aren't that many of them, but it could be in a file cabinet. It could be in a hanging file box like mine if you find that you just don't have that many of them anymore. What, wherever it is, though, it does not have to be super easy to reach because you're really not going into this very often. Then you have your important papers. Now, it's also your important information. We use the Spark Life Binder. In the course, I also teach you how you can build your own life binder if you do not want to use the Spark Life Binder. Either way is fine. But having something where you and your loved ones can quickly grab it, find all of the important information, copies of some of the important papers that they might need, even if you're not around to tell them where it is or to grab it and go in an emergency, right? And have everything you need at your fingertips. That's essential. So the important papers, you need to make sure that those are something where you and your loved ones can quickly grab them. They know where to find it and you have everything you need because you cannot take a file cabinet with you if you have to evacuate. <laughs> it's just not practical. So the important papers is an important part of your paper system. And then there's a special papers, right? All the ones that don't really fit into the general papers. Um, maybe there's a different process for handling them. Something like taxes, where you need to know, okay, well, before I file my taxes, how do I organize the papers I will need? How do I get organized during tax time? And then how do I handle them after I filed my taxes and have to keep them, but not forever? So. There's a whole special papers section in the Paper Path course, actually. And one of those is taxes. How, and I have a tax worksheet and little blueprints of how to set up all of your different files for your personality type. But taxes is one of them. So taxes would be one of the special paper groups that you uh, will need to have a different kind of a consideration for. Your vital information and originals. So those would be like birth certificates and originals of things that you have to have that original for. And those would be in a protected area, right? You want to make sure that they're fireproof and waterproof, things like that. So the paper, the special papers are very important as well. Oh, and then that's the paper path course. You can see that there's just the milestones for each one of these sections. I just break it down into, well, all right, what do you need to have set up? in what order and how can you break it down into like little tiny steps so it can fit into your day instead of being something where you have to find a massive amount of time to work on it, right? You don't want to spend a ton of time. So these are like 15 minutes or less steps. So you can just kind of work on them throughout the week. Every once in a while, just take a little step and you'll get there. But that's what your paper system, if you're using the paper path system especially, would look like because you need a place to be your gatekeeper and to handle all the stuff that you're still working on that have actions to do with it. That is your action file, which we're working on this week. Then you need something for all of those more current files, right? All the things that just came in that you might still need access to throughout the year, um, the stuff that you're done with, but you kind of want it more at your fingertips rather than all the way in the file cabinet buried. So those are the short-term files. And the nice thing is there, if you've got it set up with the self-purging system like I do in the paper path, then a lot of those papers, if you don't need them longer than a year, it will automatically purge itself. So there's a trigger that gets you to just like eyeball it and you can make sure to let go of what you need to let go of and very little actually keeps flowing into those archive papers, which is really nice. But you do need the archive papers storage because we all have some papers that do have to be kept forever. So that's another area that these archive or that these active papers, the action file papers, they might go into the short term files. They might go into your archive files if there's something that you don't need to access anytime soon. 
and you're going to keep them longer than a year. Um, and then, of course, important papers, special papers. You'll know which times you might want to enter things into those, but it's super fast and easy. So that's the overview of your papers. Um, oh, that's right. In the special papers, handling receipts would be one of those special paper types that I talk about in the course and memorabilia papers. I talk about that. Um, and with important papers, I think I also talk about how to handle papers if you're a caregiver. All of that important information about how to care for that individual and all the data that you would need about them too. So making sure that you have your paper system set up for you and what your lifestyle is like is really important. Um, but that's how it, that's how it flows. So your action file is your first step and it goes from there into, well, what's the next step, right? What needs to happen with it next? Do I just need to keep it? Do I need to have my fingers on it and not keep it long? And there's just that easy flow between these different areas. So let's see. And yeah, and the paper path system, actually, I don't think I mentioned it. This is something that is just that I created. So it's not something that you'll probably hear about in other areas, um, other places. But it's something that I have found works really, really well for the majority of people that I work with, which is awesome. And right now, actually, there's also a bonus. If you grab the paper path course now, between now and March 26th, you will get access to the fast start welcome party where you will get all the information you need and the overview and the walkthrough, and you'll know how to use your paper path course and or your path membership, which is there to support you. Um, it just gives you everything that you need in order to like, just get started fast instead of trying to figure out what's going on and take take your time. It's all right. This is all you need. Now go. <laughs> all right. So that kind of covers what your paper system looks like, right? How about where do you put your action file? Because we talked about where to put your action file helps you determine how successful you will be. Will you will be. If you put it in a place that's inconvenient or not the right place for remembering to access it, things like that, then it's just not going to work for you. So before I do that, though, I want to hop into the comments really quickly, and then we will hop over there. <laughs> Sue says, hello, me too. Uh, she says, from Shawnee in Ohio, from one doxy to another. Oh, hi, Shawnee. <laughs> Melanie says, oh, good. She says, a question. I love it. I've been in my apartment for 30 plus years. I've basically saved all the receipts and various notes and such from all those years. I need permission to shred or toss much of all of those things. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, we can actually, since I know that you're a member, <laughs> you're a PATH member, and we've got our Thursday talk coming up, our Thursday check-in for our PATH members. Let's talk about that. I will make a note to talk about that on Thursday, but um, I don't remember if you have the paper path course. The paper path course has a whole section about sorting papers, and I think that you have the course, so that's why I'm mentioning this. But in that quick sort section, when we do the onion sort, I teach you the onion sort method to make, even if you have you know 30 plus years of papers to sort through, it makes it so much easier. Well, within that onion sort section, I've got a video and a handout that can help you see, okay, well, this is why maybe I don't need this. this. These are the types of papers that I do need. These are the types of papers that I need to keep for such and such number of years or however long. And that can help give you permission as well. So if you're looking for permission to let go, the best thing you can do is educate yourself about, well, what, why would you need to hang on to it? And at what point do you no longer have that need? And that's what we go over in the quick sort and decision making within the paper path course. And that's going to be your permission to let it go. So between that and Thursday, <laughs> our Thursday check-in. But yeah, and it's true. We do need permission a lot of times. A lot of times we're just afraid to do it. And we need somebody who maybe has experience. Like I've been a professional organizer for almost 20 years now. <laughs> somebody who's got experience to let you know it's okay. 
So that's great. Lovely Marie says, I'm somebody who has to see it to remember to do it. How can I, we use this system for a positive success? The test said I was between a CEO and administrator. Awesome. And she's talking about CEO and administrator. One of the things in the paper path course, and you might've done it sometime um, through other methods. Uh, we've done it for free during Thursday talks, things like that. But there's a personality test for your organizing style. So her organizing style said that she was a mix of the CEO and administrator style for paper organizing. And in the paper path course, that's how I help you figure out, okay, well, which file structures will work for you because they're actually blueprints. If you're this, set up your file system like this <laughs> and tells you exactly how to label them and what order to put them in. But there is a lot of truth to the, if you're an out of sight, out of mind person, then how do you remember to do this? So some of the ways that I like to remind myself or that I've worked with others to help them remember what's in their to-do folder that needs to be done, what the hot, hot things are. One thing I do, let me grab a example. A binder clip. Now the binder clip is my best friend for me with my action file because I'm very much an out of sight, out of mind person. If I don't see it, I will forget that it needs to be done. So anybody who's out of sight, out of mind, these tips are for you. With your to-do folder, if you have items within that to-do folder that need to be done that you are afraid you will forget, they need to be done soon. What I like to do is on my action file, I take that binder clip and I actually clip them to the front of the action file. So that way I see if there's something clipped to the front, I know, ooh, that needs to be done now-ish. <laughs> like before the next time I plan to check this action, action file, this needs to be done. So whenever there's something hanging there, visually I can see, oh, that's right, I need to do that. So that is one option. But the whole goal is to keep just the things that are really important to do right now within your site. All of those other things that either aren't going to be due for a little bit, they won't be due before you check it again, um, or they don't necessarily have a due date they would be nice to do, those can stay in the to-do folder. So that's one option. Clip it to the front. And I like this one because I'm already looking at the action file and it trains me to keep looking at the action file and remember that, okay, this is my system. These are the hot things. Since you are also a PATH member, lovely Marie, um, on our weekly planning sessions on Mondays, we one of the things we do together in the membership is we plan out our week and we look at the to-do folder from our action file. So when you're doing that uh, week planning session with us, that's a great time to be when we write it down in our list for our planning. Also, clip the hot stuff to the front, all those deadline papers. Now, another way that you can do it if you wanted to, if you don't want to clip it to the front, Sometimes I have people who will do like a bulletin board or one of those clear uh, plastic pockets that you would hold like brochures or something in. Put that on the wall behind your action file so you can just pin or place inside anything that's super hot that has to be done right now. Another option is um, instead of using one of these types of holders where it's going to hold the, the hanging file folders. If you wanted to be able to see if there's anything in any of the folders, then you could get either the series of, and I think I've got a picture. Let me see. Either the series of clear pockets. Yes, here we go. So let me share this. I'll share it a little bit bigger. There we go. So this is what we you're currently looking at. But some of the other ways that you could do it is... You could have something that sits on the wall with those cascading file folders. So you could use it with the folders or without, or this is those clear plastic things that I was talking about. You could use this with folders if you don't want to see what's inside of it. But if you're an out of sight, out of mind person and you're afraid that you will forget something, you could always do either just the to-do section with no folder. So you will see the papers through that plastic or you could do all of them without folders and just label the file bin on the wall instead of a folder. And you will see if there's something in all of them. 
And there are different styles that you can choose from. Um, there's the mesh ones as well, those mesh desktop ones. If you don't want to necessarily put something on the wall, then look into some of those mesh desktop ones. Those can be a little difficult um, because papers can kind of get pushed to the back. And if they're kind of stacked, our brain does not always recognize that those are things to do. So my, it's not my favorite to have them than the, the tiered stacked ones, but that's just me. So if that does work for you, then go for it. And you might just want to try out a few different things. But my absolute favorite is to either clip it to the front of the action file, because that way this is still portable. You can take it to wherever you want to work with it. Um, and it reminds you to go back there or have something right behind it, like a bulletin board or something where you can pin it up. So that's a really good question. And I know that you're not the only one that wonders that one. Um, let's see. So really quickly, before I go through the rest of the comments, I wanted to talk about placement because we were going to, I promised I'd talk about this real quick and I don't want to <laughs> go too long for you because I know you've also got a day where you have to do things, but requirements for placement. So with your action file, whether it is hanging on the wall or if it is a desktop one, where you place, it's going to be important. The desktop style is easier to place it in a really simple, conspicuous place, but you don't have to use that type. But think about where do you currently walk in when you come home, when you get the mail? Where are you walking? What's your path through the house with the mail? Or if you're bringing papers in, or if you have a spouse or kids who walk in with the mail, what is that normal path? Because most likely along that normal mail path, is where you're going to want to put your action file because it's where you're already walking. So that way it's not trying to change a habit. It's making it very easy. It's just adding to your habit that you're already doing. So normally I'd say avoid putting your action file just upstairs or in a back office where it's not really fast and easy to put things in as soon as you get home with the mail. Wherever you would walk in, like usually one of the first few steps in the house along that mail path is the best. The other thing that you can think of is, okay, well, where do we usually dump the mail? If we're not handling it right then, what's the spot that we're already putting it down? Right now, if you're already putting it down on the kitchen counter all the time, so it just piles up on the kitchen counter, then that is the perfect place to put your action file. If you're already putting it down on your dining room table, that's where you can put your action file because you've already got the habit of that's where you're putting it down. So if the action file is sitting there, then the next time you go to put it down, you will see your action file, right? And then you can put it right into your action file. Now, when you are first starting to use your action file, it might feel annoying, but if you put your mail in the middle of the kitchen counter, temporarily until you're used to putting your mail there, put your action file in the middle of the kitchen counter. If you normally put it in the middle of the dining room table, put your action file in the middle of the dining room table. So if your action file, for example, is up against the, the kitchen wall, but you normally put things in the middle of the counter, then you're not really going to pay attention and see it. And we want this to be so obvious and go along with whatever you're already doing as much as possible. So put it exactly where you tend to drop the mail. And that way, when you drop the mail, you will see it and remember to put it inside. All right. So that is a great way to think about, okay, well, where should I put this? Once it's become a habit, once you get to the point where if you move the action file, you know, to the side of the counter against the wall, will your brain look for the action file now because it's used to using it? that's when you can start moving it a little bit further away. You never really want to move it far away, like to that back room or upstairs or, you know, somewhere where it's difficult to get to because then there's just going to be times where you don't put things in there because it's too hard to get to. But you can move it away from like the middle of the kitchen counter and put it in a nicer place in the kitchen or in the dining room type of thing uh, once it's become an actual habit. So some of the places that I hear people have chosen that have done really well for them. 
if you enter from the garage, then putting it right in that first room or even before you enter from the garage, if you keep your garage closed, um, hanging it on the wall before you get in from the garage or putting it on top of the dryer or on the wall in the laundry room, if you go through the laundry room from the garage, those are some places that are really helpful. If you enter through the front door, right in the entryway can be a great place. I mentioned the kitchen countertop, the dining room table, a hallway or a walkway. You can do hanging it on the wall, like those cascading ones that I showed you, or on a little tiny desk in the hallway or a walkway, but somewhere that you are already walking and it will make it so much easier. So back to the comments really quickly and I'll answer any questions that you might have. Now's your chance. And tomorrow we're talking more about making it stick. So I will talk more about making sure that you can see it instead of out of sight, out of mind, how to get your papers out of there, how to remember to check your to-do folder, all that good stuff. Um, Karen says, what was the link for the action file list? I think you're talking about the cheat sheet cards, the printable cards um, that look like like that. So they can go on the outside of a folder or inside of a folder. So if you wanted them on the inside instead, you could do like that. And I will put that link on the screen. It's also in the description. And if since you're on YouTube, it's also in the comments, but it will look like this and you can cut it out and tape it on however you'd like. Let me put that on the screen. That's in my other page. There. So Susanna K dot live forward slash TT dash download. That's your link. Um, and I will also, if you're registered for the challenge tonight, when you get the replay of this, the email with the replay, the link will also be on that email. So if you miss it right now, then you'll be able to get it then. Just make sure to download it soon because the link will expire after um, Wednesday night. It expires Wednesday, this Wednesday night. I had to think about that. Um, Okay. Oh, yes. I already answered that one from lovely Marie. Lori says, I have a four drawer file cabinet that has both my long term papers in two drawers and other information in two drawers. Great. Fantastic. I love it. Lori says, once I master using the action file and getting the to do items and to read items done, then I need to start going through the paper path course for revamping the four drawer file cabinet. Absolutely. Yeah. Get that action file. Um, if you if you have a lot going on, like I know you do, then I'd say get the action file started first and then go through your paper path. If you um, if you don't already have the paper path course and you're considering possibly doing a revamp of your system and setting up the paper path system, I would say to grab the course now, not just because of the bonus or anything um, and the price is going to go up soon, but it's really helpful as you are getting used to the action file. And Lori, do this too. Go through with the course. Check out the videos for the action file that are on there. There's a couple of quick videos. But as you're setting up the action file and also as you're making decisions on your papers, as papers come in, those two are going to be really helpful before you even start using your file cabinet. So I'd say use parts of the course now and just kind of go through them, familiarize yourself with, okay, well, this is how we make the decisions and this is kind of the flow that it's going to be. This is the extra bonus information about the action file, all that good stuff. And then you can do the rest. Um, so I would say don't hesitate to at least look through those sections of the course because they are gonna be useful for you now as you're getting started with that. Um, Karen. Oh, I already answered that. <laughs> yep. Lori says, I'm right there with Melanie about papers I've kept for 50 or more years. Yeah, that onion sort and the decision making is going to be huge for you. <laughs> yeah. Melanie she says, I do have the course. Okay. I was thinking you did. Awesome. Karen says, I process my old notes, notebooks, and receipts once a week and then get rid of them. I put, I put important info into Trello. Yay. That's awesome. I love that. Um, make sure with some of your important information, you also have a paper copy that you can grab and bring with you in an emergency in case there's ever not um, access to Trello for you know, 
internet reasons, power reasons, whatever it is. So make sure that some of that important information, you do have a paper, the ability to grab something that's paper. And so your loved ones know where to find information too. But I think that's fantastic. And I think you're rocking it. Yay. Yep. So Terry says, if you own a home, saving receipts from home improvements and repairs, no matter how long ago it was, will help you when it comes time to sell. Such things can offset capital gains. Yep, exactly. And that's why it's not a simple answer of me saying, let them all go. <laughs> but those decision making questions and the papers database can help with those questions because there are some receipts that you'd want to save. That is accurate. Uh, so. Oh, <laughs> uh, Melanie says, great. Thank you, Suzanne. I didn't actually finish my thought about the 30 plus years and such. I look forward to the Thursday talk and also have pulled my paper path course to go through milestone five. Yay. She says, which is the onion sort referring to receipts and notes and such from my apartment papers file. I've done some purging of those files, but not sure if I can let go of the early papers, etc." Yes, absolutely. So use your paper path course and in your membership, use that papers database too. If there's anything that you're still not sure about, then that papers database could be really helpful because if there's no answer there for you, then there's a little place to submit your question and get an answer. Um, let's see. I'm not going to read through all of these just because there's a bunch, but I love them. Um, yeah, Lori says, I like the idea of tabletop tiered with clear plastic and deep pockets, right? Um, good. Lori says, her location on the dining room table as things come in. Love it. Eloise Flowers says, she's in a two-bedroom apartment, so she puts her mail in a dresser, a dresser drawer. It gets very full, and then I can't remember what bills were paid and what weren't. I have all kinds of things in the drawer. Uh, or sorry, Ellen, not Eloise. Ellen. Um, yeah, exactly. So having just that little action file, maybe on top of that dresser, because that's where you're already used to putting things, right? So if you put that action file right on top, then I think that that will help you out because it won't just kind of go in there to like become compost on the bottom layer, right? <laughs> oh, yes. Yay. Other Ellen says, my action file has been upstairs and of course has not been used. So moving it downstairs to the kitchen. Woot, woot. Yes. I love that. Lovely Maria. I used a three ring binder and protection sheets for important papers like birth certificates, marriage, etc. Then lock it in the bottom of the filing cabinet drawer. Yes, absolutely. That's great to do with some of those important vital papers. Make sure it's also fireproof and waterproof. If they're originals, um, that your drawer is fireproof and waterproof. And then make sure that some of the regular important information, insurance policy numbers and some of the contact information and health information are quick grabs so you don't have to lock them up. But yes, you've got a great start. I love it. And in your course, it's going to talk about what goes in the fireproof and waterproof and what goes in the important paper system. Uh, because I know that you already had the course. Lori says, I love a session on what receipts to keep and how long that can be used for capital gain for when you sell your house. Yeah. In the Thursday, our PATH member Thursday talks, we can definitely talk about that a little bit. I like that. Well, cool, cool. All right. We talked about a bunch of things today. Let me make sure that we covered all the major stuff. I think we did. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. So tomorrow, tomorrow, what we're talking about is we'll go deeper on how to remember to check your action file. So tomorrow's a big day. You want to make sure to make it um, either live or the replay. How to break things down into small steps because papers can feel overwhelming, right? Especially if you have 30 or 50 years of them in your house, which that happens because that's where we live, right? So how to break it down into small steps, an overview of the structure of the paper path system, so I'll show you much more in depth of how that system, like what the different parts are and what makes it different and how to know if it'll work for you. You know, is it, is it your bag? <laughs> and then what to do next. So remember to share this challenge. And today your next step is to find a place for your action file so you can be successful with it. Make sure it's super easy where you're already dumping your mail or in a walkway, not upstairs or somewhere awkward or with a lid on it. And then... Set up the rest of your file system so that all of your papers are as easy as this. So 
figure out what your next step is, like what the one next step is towards setting up that rest of that file system. Because the action file is the gatekeeper, but you still need the rest of the, the company behind it, right? <laughs> so think about what is the next step for setting that up. So let's do a quick recap as I tend to do. We talked about the purpose of the action file. Temporary storage, it's like your gatekeeper. So everything that comes in hits here first. And then here is where we make sure that there are no actions that need to be done with it before it gets put where it needs to go. We make sure that junk is filtered out. We make sure that if it needs to be scanned and let go of instead of filed, that it gets scanned instead. We make sure that nothing that you don't have to keep hits that long-term filing system. So it might go in short-term files and it might just go. But this is that gatekeeper that's keeping our whole file system clean and making sure that we don't forget anything that needs to be done, right? Nothing important can skip through. There's only one file folder that you need to check on a regular basis, which is your to-do folder. And once all the actions are finished with a paper, it flows right into that file system. But it is temporary storage. We talked about where does the action file fit into your paper system, how it's the first step, but then there are those other sections of your file system, right? There are those four other sections. You got your short term, um, actually how do people just get out of there? And then the file system overview. So we have that short term papers. So that would be the stuff that you keep for one year or less. And when you make them self purging, that means that it's so much easier not to have a full file system or file drawers. So short term papers, preferably self purging short term papers. Long-term papers, that's your file cabinet, those archive files. Those are ones that you would keep for a year or more. Your important papers, uh, that would be like your Spark Life binder where you are storing the most important papers and paper copies and information. So if you had to evacuate or your loved ones need to find the papers, or if you just need to be able to get your hands on information quickly, then it's all in one place. And then you've got your special papers that would include your originals that go in the fireproof and waterproof safe, your taxes that have a specific time period to keep them for or to prepare for taxes, receipts, uh, memorabilia papers. So all of those different very special papers um, that would have sort of their own needs. We talk about those. And then we talked about, let's see, sorry, today I had a bunch of different bullet points in case I needed them. And I've got two different sections for it. All right, then we talked about where to put it. So what do you need to think of when you're trying to find a place to put your action file, that first step? Easy access along a path that you are already walking on with the mail. So where do you come into the house? Uh, where do others usually come into the house with the mail or papers? Well, along that path is a great way. Or where do you usually put the papers? Where do you usually put your mail? What's your drop zone? And then when you figure those out, stick it right in the center where you can't miss it. So if your drop zone, for example, is on the kitchen counter in the very middle, then for a temporary period of time, put your action file in the center of the kitchen counter in the very middle, right where you drop the mail so you cannot miss it. So you're already using that habit and it can be right there. Then we talked about join me tomorrow because tomorrow we are talking about the last day of the challenge. It's only the three days. So the last day of the challenge, we are talking about how to remember to get process things, to do the actions, to get them out of the action file and how to break things down into small steps to get them done a lot easier and how to manage it with all of your papers. So I hope to see you tomorrow. Make sure that if you did not already download your cheat sheet, papers. Make sure to do that today. And if you're watching this on a replay or if you missed it during this session, that's okay. Tonight, if you are registered for the challenge, you will get an email with the replay and it will have a link to downloading these for you. And that's it. You are doing absolutely amazing. One small step at a time, you are making such a big difference in your paper life. So your next step today is just find a place for your action file and figure out what is the next step. Just one next step towards how to organize the rest of your file system if you don't like how it's working, if it's not flowing, if it's just stagnant, 
then, okay, well, what is the next step towards figuring out what I want to do with this file system? And we'll just take it one step at a time. You've got this beautiful. Um, let's see one second in the comments. Oh, yep. Lori can't make it live tomorrow, but she'll watch the replay. That is awesome. Not a problem. That's why I have the replays, right? And Lori says, thanks. This has been very help helpful. You are so welcome. Absolutely. Well, I love you, beautiful. And I will see you very soon. Bye now.